How can we get cloud code works well as your code base became more and more complicated without getting into circles and make you feel frustrated? One thing I learned is that there are many things you can do to improve the performance dramatically through good context engineering. And context engineering basically means how you can optimize what goes into a conversation history thread for the cloud code or codex so that only relevant and necessary information are included here to guide agents' next actions. As we know, coding agent like cloud code at default has 200,000 token context limit. And if you run slash context in your cloud code, you will see breakdown token consumptions across different categories. And this is a very basic example of what you can do with context engineering optimization. Because in general, the whole context consists of a few different things. The system problem and system tools is something you can't really change. It always comes with agent. So the part you can optimize is, the agent has any MCP tools or custom agents that you don't really use but consume a lot of tokens. And the memory file here are basically your cloud.md file. And I know as your project became bigger and bigger, sometimes your cloud.md file just became so big that it leaves very little room for the actual messages. So in this very specific example, I can already see that if I remove all those MCPs from this agent, it will immediately give me 2% additional context token window. So this is one very basic example of what you can do to optimize context window better. The key part you want to optimize is the actual messages, which including the user message you send, as well as a list of two core actions that the agent take. And the key thing here is that how can you make sure all the information in the history here is relevant and reduce noise as much as possible. And there are many things you can do here. For example, subagent is a great tool that you can use to reduce context. So we're going to look at what happened here. If you prompt agent, help me at a Google OS, the majority of the actions agent take here is actually not about making trends, but doing the research to figure out the right plan for the implementation. And those research steps generally took a whole bunch of context in the conversation thread. And with a feature like cyber agents, instead of including all those research related token consumption in the main conversation thread, you just delegate and offload the whole token consumption related to research to the sub agent where it has isolated conversation thread to do just this and return back a summary of the research, which means only absolute necessary information and tokens are included in the main conversation thread. So one very basic thing you can do is that before you implement a big feature, you can just add a small text that lets you task or subagent to do the research first so that it can trigger the specific behavior. And this is why I often use the compact command much more proactively so that after agent completes certain set of fairly isolated tasks, I often just run the compact so that we can proactively clean up the conversation thread. But the most important effective method that I often use is set up your own documentation system for your code base. There are many different ways you can do that. And this is the part I want to dive a bit deeper today. But before we dive into that, one trend that's been happening is that more and more people use cloud code to not only do coding tasks, but day-to-day -day operation tasks from handling your emails, using different systems, automate tasks in different productivity apps, journaling. And this tells us this massive layer to build. Look at what type of use case people are trying to hack into cloud code, then productionize it into agentic products. That's why I want to introduce you to this research called AI Agents Unleashed, a programmatic report about what kind of things and use case people are hacking agents into, who those people are, what they're doing, and dive deeply into real world examples where they interview hundreds of people from top startups and enterprise in the world across marketing sales operation, as well as real world learnings of what actually worked and what didn't, the common pitfalls and challenges people are facing today. So you can use those information to direct your agentic product roadmap much better. One of the favorite parts is that they propose a really useful framework to think through if a task and use Case, they can drive huge business value that people are currently paying for. So if you're trying to build a agentic products, I highly recommend you go check out this research. You can access this report for free in the description below. And thanks HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about my documentation system for cloud code. So the purpose of documentation system is to create a summarized snapshot of your current code base. So instead of an agent every time doing deep research across the whole code base to find the information that it needs, you can just read a summarized documentation that clearly pull all the relevant information together. So it has less noise in the context window and also making sure all the relevant information are fed into context instead of hoping agent pull all the relevant information together by itself. And the question is what type of documentation is used for and how can you make it scalable as your code base became larger and larger? So the common structure I have is something like this. I typically just have this dot agent folder that contains all the relevant and useful information that I need. So one is the task folder. This is where I store all the PRDs. And if you don't know what PRD is, basically before I implement any feature, I always turn on plan mode and ask to generate implementation plan. And after finish, I will always store the implementation plan in the task folder. So next time, if we are implementing something similar, we can link to those implementation docs as a reference. 
And second part is system folder. So system folder contains things like project structure, the database schema, your APIs, also some critical and complex part of your code base. And those things can go across different individual PRDs and really useful for agent to get an overall understanding. And this is also the part that it can grow bigger and bigger. And third is SOPs. This is where we will log the standard process for doing certain things or mistakes you saw agent make. So after I get agent do something, I will ask it to generate an SOP for this specific process. It can be as generic as like adding a new database table, what are the list of actions it should take, to something more granular like how to integrate a new replicate model. And last but not least, also a readme file. So as your code base became more and more complicated, there will be just so many docs. And the readme here is almost like index of all documentation files you have and when to read which documentation file. So the agent can quickly get an overview of all the relevant documentations and read and inject into conversation history. So this is a common documentation system I often use. Meanwhile, I will also use this update doc command quite frequently. What it does is that it basically includes certain instructions to agent about what to do when initialize documentation structure as well as when you need to update documentation. So I will run this command after I implement certain features. Or I can use this update doc command after we help agent correct certain mistakes so we don't make the same mistakes again. Then it will create this SOP that clearly lists out all the step-by-step -step process and also the related documentations so that agent can consume more relevant information. And this SOP doc will also be included in the readme.md. So this is pretty common structure I use for my projects and continuously maintain and updating them. Obviously, the best version of documentation system is always something tailored to your code base. For example, I talked to Simon from AI Builder Club where he showcased how he builds the whole documentation system with his team for their Lexi code base. This is the pointer doc, as it were, that points to everything, um, how we do all sorts of things and you know best practices, um, etc. And so yeah. this is very human readable, obviously, as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is. It was designed more for our LLM friends. We document all the ways we do our like migrations, how we store the data. We've got a whole class of things with methods for helpers, updaters, utilities, all sorts of stuff like that. We've sort of split out all that, all this stuff into well documented mm -hmm. sections. The very first versions of these we did inside Claude. We got Claude to generate the MD files. And then we started using Cursor and we got our own little uh, this thing here. All um, right. What are, what are they, these things are called? Now, Cursor now has got the slash commands. I haven't yet experimented with turning this into a slash command because I've always mm. found this rather frustrating that we've only got <laughs> so much room <laughs> to see what's going yeah. on in there. But it's not complicated. We go through and then we say, review this class mm. and upgrade the inline documentation. So we do that first so that then the class has got the best possible inline documentation. Mm. And then we'll use a, a prompt in the prompt interface to generate the class documentation in mm. more detail. So there's this workflow that goes generate or update the inline documentation and then output that into the bigger documentation. So I've just thrown all the LLMs at this to sort of get as best as we can. It makes the whole process easier to manage by exposing all of that. And let me give you a quick example of how do I do it. If I start a new project, let's firstly create cloud.md file. I'll just add one section for docs. Specifically explain the doc structure we want the agent to follow. And then give it rules that we always update the agent folder docs after we implement certain features. And before we plan any implementation, always raise the readme first to get the full context. And meanwhile, I will also create a doc cloud folder comments update doc.md. This is a simple prompt that specifically telling agent about the doc structure and what to do when we start initialize the doc and what to do when we ask to update doc, as well as some very specific rules when it creates new doc files. I'm going to show you how we use this setup to continuously update the docs. So I'll firstly do slash update doc initialize. This will race through my current project and try to set up a doc agent folder structure. And once it finished, you will see that it creates this doc agent folder and set up a project architecture as the first doc. And there's also a readme file under the doc agent folder, which listing out all the docs that we have. Now let's just take you through an example of how do we use this. Let's say we want to build a basic app that can do text to image generation using a model host on replicate. So I'm going to copy over the doc and give prompt. How we build a text to image app using model above. And I'm going to use a plan mode. And after I finish the plan, I'm going to prompt a save implementation plan in doc agent slash task folder and start implementation. 
Great, now we have this text to image model working. Quite often in my experience, model will fail to integrate replicate model out of the box. And that's where I can use this update doc command saying generate SOP integrating replicate model. Then what it will do is that they will create this replicated model integration SOP. In this doc, it will explain specifically step-by-step -step integration process, the directory structure it should follow, and also there's a section called related documentations. So for this one, probably didn't make perfect sense, but you can imagine if your documentation became more and more complicated, this can be used as a directory to lead to all related documents. And in the end, it will also go update the readme as well to include more stuff. So now I can even clear the conversation. Without giving too much context, I give a different model, which is text to video, and give a prompt. Help me add text to video capability using model above. Plan the implementation and read doc agent doc first for context. And again, I'm using the plan mode. This time, you can see it we're reading through different files to get the full picture. And we're gonna do the same thing. Save the implementation plan to slash task folder and start implementing. With this one, it's able to one shot this video generation model, and it is fully functional without any errors. So this is how you can imagine this whole documentation system works. You can have higher confidence that I can just come in anytime and start implementing something with pretty consistent performance. You can do the same thing for your existing code base as well. To ask Cloud Code, start generating the system architecture documentations, which can include in text that project architecture, as well as database schema, API endpoint, and many more. If you're interested, we have a specific session in AI Builder Club where we include detailed instructions of the cloud.md and update doc commands that you can copy paste, as well as a one hour workshop where Simon dive deeper into his specific setup. So you can learn how others are generating documentation system for big and complex code base. I have put the link in the description below for you to join AI Builder Club. So feel free to click and join if you're interested. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you and I see you next time.